Okay, so good morning again. Bokitov, Chodesh to everybody. The show will be a little bit shorter today, but as requested, we started a bit later. So hopefully people had a chance to have their breakfast. Rosh Chodesh, same thing tomorrow. Tomorrow we'll start at nine o'clock as well because it is uh, also Rosh Chodesh. Okay, so we're on Daf Yudalil Amud Aleph. We're on Daf Yudalil Amud Aleph. We're going through now the opinion of Rabbi Yitzchak. Right, we saw the bright already a couple of times. Three different opinions in the uh, in the Tanaim in terms of when Malkut would apply. We have the opinion now of Rabbi Yitzchak who claims that uh, Malkut would only apply that when you have a love for which Malkut applies, that's it. And if you have uh, any other, if you have Karait or Mitat Beitin or anything else, that then Malkut there would not apply. Rabbi Yitzchak and Rabbi, Shem, uh, Rabbi Shema and Rabbi Akiva held a little bit differently. We saw they, they had a Machlok at exactly which cases, but we're not going to get into that now. But the machloket between them and Rabbi Yitzchak is regarding regarding uh, Malkot for 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 other Yisurim. So let's just see again quickly. Um, right, if we look about eight lines down from the top of the page, right. Um, sorry, no, even before that. Um, yeah. So just quickly again, four lines down from four lines from the top of Yudalel Amud Aleph, we said Rabbi Yitzchak Omer. Right, we said the Rabbi Yitzchak learns out from the fact that the Pasuk talking about um, Israel Arayot and talking about Achoto, it mentions Karet there again to teach you that when you have Karet, you only have Karet, um, and when you have Malkot, and you would not have Malkot as well. Right, Rabbanan over here, being Rabbi Ishmael and Rabbi Akiva, said no. He said that the reason it teaches you karate is to teach you that each one, each individual case, would have karate on its own, even if all of these uh, Isurim were, were, were committed during the same halem, during the same period of uh, forgetfulness. Um, each one would require its own its own korban, right? This is the, the question that was asked yesterday. What do we mean? How to say that each one is is as a different chiyuv individually? The answer is if the, if it was done b'shogeg, and then each one of these esurim would have. Although we said if it's a b'meiz, it would be karet. B'shogeg would be a korban, and then there would be a separate korban for each. For each so what we're going to do now? The Gemara plays a little bit of ping pong over here because there are a lot of limudim. And essentially, we've seen, we start off, we see there's a machloket between Rabbi Shmuel and Rabbi Akiva, who we'll call Rabbanan on the one hand, and Rabbi Yitzchak on the other hand, in terms of what we learn from this, uh, from this pasuk. So aside from the limud, which Rabbi, Yochana, uh, which Rabbi Yitzchak says, that it's only karet, um, it's only karet and not malkot, which Rabbanan disagree with him on, but all the other principles that are coming out here, in terms of separate korbanot, and in terms of separate chiyuvim, are going to be things which everyone's going to agree with, but they're going to disagree on the source. So each time, if Rabbi Yitzchak learns it out from this pasuk, the Gemara is going to ask the Idach, the others, where do they learn it out from? So we're going to see if they learn, or what, or what do they learn from that pasuk? And we see they learn something else. So then the question is, okay, where does Rabbi Yitzchak learn that from? And he learns from somewhere else, etc. And it's going to go back and forth, back and forth quite a new, quite a few times. The Gemara often does this. Right, and that's what the word ve'idach means. The other one, ve'idach, yeah, is going to be going going back and forth. So we said, Rabbi Yitzchak learns out from yeah, that it's just karet and not malkot. We said Rabbanan learn out from the fact that it says karet again by achotot to teach you that each one, even if it was behelem echad, each uh, each one of these arayot, one would get a se- is a separate isur, and one would get separate chiyuv karet for. Um, Okay, so now the question is, Rabbi Yitzchak, where does he learn that from? Right, so we're about now, about 10 lines down. Um, the line that starts, Kol Echat Vechat, and then it says, Rabbi Yitzchak, Lechalek Menale. So where does Rabbi Yitzchak learn to distinguish that from? To say that each, even if it was, Helem Echad, each one is going to be a separate korban, each one of these arayot. So it answers the Gemara, Nafkale, Niva Elisha, Benidat Tumata. Right, as we saw yesterday, Rashi points out, Mivael Isha says Rashi the matzei lemichtav velenida lotikrav. The pasuk could have said lenida lotikrav. Why does it have to say al isha benida tumata? Why does it have to say isha to tell you? Says Rabbi Yitzchak lechayev akol isha ve'isha. 
that each one, each uh, forbidden relationship with each individual woman is going to be a separate chiyuv. So, so then says the Gemara, okay, Rabbanan nami tepukle meha. It says, why didn't the Rabbanan learn it out from here as well? Why did they have to learn by karet by So it says, enachinami. It says, right, enachinami, meaning they could. They could learn it out, in fact, from here also. The ela karet achoto lamani. So what did they learn out? What did Rabbi Ishmael and Rabbi Akiva learn from the Pasuk that says Karait by Achoto? So it says, Lechaivo al Achoto, Val Achot Aviv, Val Achot Imo, right? Three different uh, sisters, theoretically, the Pasuk could be talking about. Could be talking about this person's sister, could be talking about his father's sister and his mother's sister, all three of them, to teach you that each three, each one of these three would be a separate issue, a separate prohibition, would therefore be a separate Korban as well. So, so uh, says the Gemara, that is obvious. It says, Pshita, Hare Gufin Muchlakin, Hare Shemot Muchlakin. They are different people and they are different Israel. So, no, says the Gemara, Ela Lachaivo Alachoto, Shehi Achot Aviv, Shehi Achot Imot. To teach you, no, that, that where, although it is Shemot Muchlakin, but it's not Gufin Muchlakin, it's the same person. All three, one sister, one, there could be a case. This is an extreme case. Um, but uh, again, in, in order to uh, to learn the underlying principles, we go to the we go to the extreme cases to say that it could be one's sister and one's father's sister and one's mother's sister are all the same person, um, even though it's all the same person because it's three different shemot muchlakim, it's three different isurim. Then the person would be required to to bring three different korbanot. So says the Gemara, how do you have such a case? This is a wicked person, the son of a wicked person. Again, we explained this briefly yesterday. It's a little bit confusing. So let's just look at it again. Rashi explains what the, the Gemara just tells us. It's a Rasha ben Rasha. It doesn't go into any, any further detail than that. But Rashi spells out the case. He says, Haba al imo So a person had relations with his mother and they had two daughters. So now these daughters are both his daughters and his sisters because they share a mother. The Chazar ubalachat mehen volid ben. So not only that, then he then had relations with one of his sisters who is also his daughter, and they had a son. Now this son baha ben alachot imo then has relations with the with the sister of his mother. Okay, so on the one hand, this is also his sister because they share a father. This is also his father's sister because she and the father share a mother. And it's also the, the mother's sister because she's the mother's sister. So that is the case. So both the, uh, that's why it's a Rasha Barasha because the father um, is, uh, is, 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 is uh, having forbidden relationships with his mother. And this guy is having forbidden relationships with his mother. Yes, it's a very, very, very uh, extreme case, as we said. But the point is, theoretically, there could be a situation, says the Gemara, where it's the same woman, and but because it's the same person, but it's different isurim, therefore they are separate, separate uh, chiyuvim. So that is what we learn out, and um, that is what Rabbanan learn out from the pasuk that says karet specifically by achoto. So now the question is, okay, Rabbanan being Rabbi Akiva and Rabbi Shmuel learn that from that pasuk. But Rabbi Yitzchak already learned separately. He learned from that pasuk that what? That it's karet and not malkot. So where does he learn this case from? That it's uh, of, of achot, achot imon, achot aviv, where it's the same person. Says the Gemara, we're about halfway down the page now. Rabbi Yitzchak hamanale. So Rabbi Yitzchak, where does he have this from? Notice again, the Gemara does not say, oh, that's that's such an extreme case, it's such a strange case, what, what does it matter? It says, no, where, where do we learn it from? We find this often, um, you know, it takes us to, to a completely different realm. But when we, we spoke about it a little bit in the in the technology share, you know, sometimes, I'm not suggesting that anything in this Gemara is, is relevant to that. But sometimes you find these cases in the Gemara, you find very, very strange cases. And you think, you know, what is going on? Why does the Gemara have to talk about this? When could this ever happen? And the truth is it may never happen. This case is very, very unlikely. We would hope that this case would never happen. But uh, the point is, 
then we're looking at the underlying principles. We're looking at, we're taking away, we're not just answering, you know, a practical case. What happens when next? We're saying, what is what is behind it? What is behind the prohibition? Where do we separate them? Where does it one chiyuv? Where is it separate chiyuvim? The same person, different people, the same is so different is And through that, we get an understanding of what the Torah really wants. And we get an understanding of these different principles. And as I say, in a different uh, in a different realm completely. But sometimes you have uh, these agaratot, or sometimes you have these stories of the Gemara, and, and the Maharal writes this, and the Ramchal writes this in, in different ways. They say that sometimes Chazal couched their, the, the stories they were telling us in, in very, very strange language. It's almost a, a, a code um, because they were trying to understand different principles that come out. And sometimes, again, for hundreds of years or for thousands of years, we cannot understand where these principles would ever be relevant to practical halacha. And then all of a sudden comes along some sort of technological innovation, something nobody's ever thought of. And somebody says, wait, there's a Gemara somewhere in Masechet Makot or whatever it is that tells us a principle that might be able to be applied here. So that's just something to, to, to bear in mind. In any event, so our Gemara now, so our question is, where does Rabbi Yitzchak learn this out from? Where does Rabbi Yitzchak learn out the fact that if you have shemot muhlakim, meaning you have various different isurim, but it's on the same person, that it would be separate isurim and it would therefore be separate chiyuvim and separate korbanot. So says the Gemara, Rabbi Yitzchak, Hamanale. So the an answer is, Nafkale mikal vachomer. He learns this out not from a pasuk, but he learns it out from a kavachomer. And what is the kavachomer? The Tanya. Amar Rabbi Akiva. So the Gemara here begins with a story. It's very interesting. You know, sometimes I heard it recently. I can't remember who, it, who said it, but there was a certain, um, actually, I think somebody said that when he learned about Rav Soloveitchik. He said that Rav Soloveitchik would in his halacha shirim, he would always tell stories. And he said that people would, you know, people would therefore remember the stories. When they remembered the stories, they'd be able to remember the halacha as well. So sometimes we find the Gemara does this. The Gemara tells us a story. It says that Rabbi Akiva asked Rabban Gamliel and Rabbi Yeshua when they were in the Itli Shal Imaum. They were at the meat market in a place called Imaum. What were they doing in the meat market? They went to go and buy meat for the wedding of Rabban Gamliel's son. In those days, there were no caterers. They had to go and do it themselves. But uh, it's also interesting, why on earth does the Gemara have to tell us that they were in the meat market and then this happened? So maybe there's a lesson as well. The lesson is to tell us, right? Wherever you go, wherever they were, they used the opportunity to, uh, to study Torah, to talk together, to learn in, uh, uh, to talk in learning. I once, had the, uh, I once had the opportunity to be on train. I was going to a rabbinical conference and I happened to be on the train with Diane Gelly, who was the Av Beitin of, uh, of London Beitin. And it was actually the first time I met him. So it was a little bit embarrassing because I didn't know who he was. And we started talking and he asked him my name. And I said, and then he said, you know, he said who he was. And I was like, oh, okay. Um, but then we were, there were a few other people there. And then he just he looked up and he said, okay, let's fulfill the mitzvah of And he started to uh, he started to give over a shir clearly that he had prepared in his head, which was which was quite a grand experience. But this is uh, so this is what we see that the Tanaim are teaching us wherever you are, whatever you do, you can learn Torah. There is, I have to mention as well, there's a beautiful introduction to the Chokhmat Adam. The Chokhmat Adam, or sorry, the Chaye Adam, one of the most important poskim of the last century. The Mishnah Brewer quotes him on just about every page. So he wrote Chaye Adam on, on, uh, on Orachayim. He wrote Chokhmat Adam on, on um, Yeradea and, um, and, and other sections of the Shulchan Aruch as well. So he was a merchant. And he writes in the introduction how people would uh, make fun of him and people would mock him and they would say, you know, you, you, you're you somebody, you're just uh, looking for money, you, that's all you care about and, and you aren't uh, serious, you aren't learning. And he said, no, he said, I had to do this. I had to go, uh, I had to go and make my parnasa. But I can tell about myself that I uh, that I never I never left the Torah. He says that I He says wherever I was when I was on the boat, I was thinking of Torah. When I was in the shop, I was thinking of Torah. And a few years ago, Aaron Razal turned it into a song, beautiful song. You can you can look it up and listen after the share. But that is uh, that, that's what comes to mind when we see these kind of stories. So, Amar Rabbi Rabbi Akiva Shalti Rabban Gamliel Rabbi Yosho Beit Lishel Ma'om Shachuli Kach Beimal Mishteh Benosh Rabban Gamliel. Okay, with all, after all the preamble. So what were they talking about? What was the halachic case they, they discussed? They said, 
This precise question happened to be what they were talking about. If somebody was to have forbidden relations with their sister, who is also their father's sister, and who is also their mother's sister, what would be the din? Chayav al kulan, eno chayav al kulan el achat, o chayav al kol achat vechat. Would it be that because it's just one person that there would only be one chiyuv and one korban? Or would it be for each separate iso, therefore there would be three? Some rulers, they said to him, Zulo shamanu. We, we, we've never, surprising, right? We don't have a tradition for this particular case. But, uh, so, so this case, we don't know. However, aval shamanu, we do know the following case instead. Habal chamesh nashim nidot. Right, so so Yisro uh, Nida is also a chiyuv karet. So if a person was to uh, was to have relations with five women, five women who are all a Nida in one hele mechad, again in one period of uh, forgetfulness that uh, this was asur or whatever it is. So he says shechayav al kol achat vechat. Although it's all the same isur, it's, it's isur nida, which is the same for each for each of those uh, for, for each of the people. And nonetheless, they would have to bring five different korbanot. So he says, therefore, near into very mikavachome, ma nida sheishem echad chayava kol achat veachat kan she shlosha shemot lo kol shekem. They say, let's say there is therefore a kavachome. If we say by nida. Where there is only one isur, there is one shem, which is which is all isur nida, but each one would be a separate a separate uh, isur, would be a separate chiyuv. So too over here, where it is three different isurim, right? Kalvachomer, you could say that that is uh, uh, that you would need. So so that is therefore how. Uh, so we would say that Rabbi Rabbi Yitzchak, although he does not have the limit from the pasuk, he would have the limit from that from that kalvachomer. Okay, so if you have the limit from the Kavah Homer, you don't need the limit from the Pasuk. So therefore, Rabbi Ishmael and Rabbi Akiva don't need the Pasuk. But answers the Gemara says, no, 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 no. It says, and I'm sure you're all thinking this already, that there is a problem with this Kavah Homer, right? He says, Ve'idach. And the others would say, Kavah Homer Prechau. This is not a good Kavah Homer. This is a Kavah Homer that can be refuted very, very easily. Why? Because we say the following. Malanida sheken gufin muchlaki. Right? It's true that in that case where Nida is all the same, uh, where, where it's one uh, one Isu, and over here in our case it's three Isurim, but over there it's five different people. Over there it's five different women, and he has all the same one. So the Kaaba Homer doesn't work. You could go in both directions. You could say that case is more severe because you know, the, case, the case of Nida is more severe because uh, the case of um, Sorry, of Achuto is more severe because it's three different Isurim. But on the other hand, the case of Nida is more severe because it's five different people. So therefore, the Kavachomet doesn't work. Right? This is a Kavachomet uh, you can easily refute. It says, right? How can you compare it? Because they are separate, separate individuals, separate women, and therefore it doesn't uh, work. So hang on a second. So then, what does Rabbi Yitzchak do? Right, like I said, we're playing a little bit of ping pong. Uleidach nami, nami ay vaday kavachome prichau. It says for the other one, I for Rabbi Yitzchak as well. You're correct. This would also be a kavachome pricha. We we don't have an answer for that. So therefore, we say no. He's got to learn it out from somewhere else. Elanaf kale me achoto de seifa. We say now, Rabbi Yitzchak learns out now from, from Achoto the Sefer. What do we mean by that? That in the Pasuk, which we quoted earlier, where it says that uh, that uh, there would be um, karet uh, for, for uh, relations with one sister as well, it mentions the word Achoto again. It mentions it in another time where it is superfluous. Says Rashi, me Achoto the Sefer, Ervat achoto gila. Why does the pasuk come along again when say the word achoto? So no, that is coming to teach you. That is coming to teach you an extra limud that where you have this case of achoto, who is actually three different isurim, each one would be its own. Uh, each one would be its own kiyuv. Okay. So you already know what the next question is in the Gemara, right? What is so therefore? What do Rabbi Yishma and Rabbi Akiva learn from achoto de seifa? What do they do with that? For idach achoto de seifa lamali. 
answer, and, and this may sound a little bit familiar, which in a moment we'll see why, is they say, bat aviv u bat imo. So it is to teach you that the chi of ya yeah, of karet and the, uh, would apply, although the pasuk just says sister, the the uh, the chi of would apply for both one sister from one's father and one sister from one's mother. Here we're not talking about uh, this, this is just an ordinary case, right? A person can have siblings, siblings from one parent, from the other parent, from both parents, different people, different sisters, nothing, uh, nothing funny going on, not like the previous case, but just to teach you that when it says achoto, that uh, it says achoto twice, to teach you that it applies to both. It applies equally to one's father, one's, and one's mother. Okay. Um, therefore, the Gemara says that we have to infer something now. If we say that Rabbi, Rabbi Akiva and Rabbi Shmuel learn out, they need the Achotor at the end of the Pasuk as a drasha to tell you that the Chiyuv Karet applies equally both to the both to one's uh, sister from father and from one's mother. That means, that implies, second last line of the page, Lomar, She'en on Shin Min Hadin. That means that they hold that we don't say on shin min hadin, that we don't apply a punishment based on a kavachomer. Based on a kavachomer. See Rashi over here. Rashi says, she'en on shin min hadin, meaning we needed an explicit pasuk to tell us about the punishment that it applies over there. Even though logically you would say that it applies the same to one's sister from one's father and from one's mother, that's not enough. We need the pasuk to tell us explicitly. So says Rashi, e'en on shin min hadin. Right, the the uh, the uh, pasuk has taught us that there is a punishment for one's uh, sister from one's mother who is not from one's father, or for one's father who is not from one's mother. but aviv and you could say kol sheken all the more so shanash but aviv that one sister from one's father and mother. But if you say that, so then you are saying an ashta minadin. You're saying that there's a that there's a kavachomer that there's a kavachomer to uh, apply a punishment. That's why we say at the end. That's why we say the extra word um, sister. Sorry. So so essentially, the limud here is is for one's. Um, is for one sister who is from the father and the mother. We've already learned separately one sister from one's father or one sister from one's mother. But Aviv Batimo has to teach me again, Achoto, to teach you that it's uh, that both would apply as well, even though it's logical, even though we might say Kavachomer, because we don't say, uh, according to this approach, we don't say Kavachomer from uh, uh, to apply punishment. Einon Shin Minadin. Now, if all of this sounds a little bit familiar, that's good. Doesn't sound familiar. We need to do some chazara. But if it does sound familiar, it's because we've already had this limit earlier, much earlier on, um, all the time ago. If you go back in the Gemara to the Hey Amud Bet, and all the way back when we were in the first uh, parak, when we were talking about Adim Zomamim, and when we learned about the fact that Basitim no Kasher Zamam, right? Remember that there was a din that uh, the the punishment which the Adim Zomamim were trying to apply to somebody else, and right? they were trying to get somebody else killed, so they would get killed. When would they get killed? Only when it's Kasher Zamam, not Kasher Asa. Only if the person had not had not uh, yet uh, had, had not been killed. If the person had been killed already, we spoke about this many times, then the Adim Zomamim would not be killed. We would say that we assume that there is a certain level of Shatat Deshmai in terms of what takes place in Beitin, and that person was meant to die. And therefore, we aren't going to kill them as well. But that was a bit of a machloket between the Purushim and the Stukim and the Gemara, the Mishnah, on the Vayam would bet what a Kava Chomer to learn. And then the Gemara said that we don't learn... Uh, if you have a look at the Fayamud Bet, where the Gemara starts, so about three lines down from the beginning of the Gemara, uh, which is about halfway down the page, and it says over there, um, right, Einon Shin Minadin, that we don't apply punishment from based on a Kavachom, and to Tanya, Ish Asherikachet Achoto, but Aviv or but Imo. Where the Zapasuk, which tells us that a person cannot, uh, uh, right, for if it's one's sister who is the daughter of one's uh, father or the daughter of one's mother. So said the Gemara over there, only Ella Bataviv Shilobatimo or Batimo Shilobataviv. 
But Imor, but Aviv, Minayin, where do we know if uh, it's one sister from both parents? Talmud Lomar, Evad Achot Ogila. Right, yeah, that, that we need the, the limit from the Pasuk to teach us that because we say, Einon Shemanadin. Okay, so that was, we learned that already, and that comes up again over here, back in, in, in our Gemara on, on New Dalit and Mudbet. So that is therefore what, what um, Rabbi Shman and Rabbi Akiva learned from that extra, learned from that Pasuk of, of uh, Achoto. So now we're going back. So now we say, okay, so what, Rabbi Yitzchak. Therefore, what we already know what he learns from that pasuk of Achoto, that is uh, regarding the, the, the separate case of Karet and of the Korban. But where does he learn this principle from? That there would be that Karet would apply also for one sister, but Aviv or Batimu. So the Gemara says two answers, two possible answers. Um, so Ibai Daima Gama Onesh Me'azara, we're on the last line of, of Yudal Amur Aleph. Either you could say Gamar Onesh Me Azhara, that he learns the, the uh, punishment from the Azhara, meaning because the Azhara, the prohibition, is already written. And in this case, we don't need a separate, we don't need a separate Pasuk to teach me specifically the Sri of Karait. Once it's been mentioned together as an Isu, then it's, uh, it's uh, assumed that that is, uh, or it's implied that that is included as well. So that's answer number one, says Rashi, Gamar Onesh Me Azhara. Right, we're in in uh, regarding the azhara. Everybody agrees that it's written that the word achotcha is written there, which is superfluous. to teach you that it's also a prohibition for a sister from both parents. Right, that word achotcha at the end of the pasuk is superfluous. So he says, "Ma azhara lo chilek ben achoto, but aviv shelo bat imo, ubat imo shelo bat." Just any possibilities for whose uh, sister is. So after Onesh, so too, once we know that, we know that the the uh, the Onesh will be the same. So right? just mentions all three from his father, not from his mother, from his mother, not from his father, or from, from both. So that is one possibility. The Rabbi Yitzhak learns it like that. Once it says the Azara, it does not and specified regarding the Azara, regarding the prohibition, it does no longer need to specify regarding the Onesh or the Bait or if you prefer another answer, it says Nafkale Nafkale me achoto de Reisha. Right there, or you could say you learn out there is another achoto which is written in the pasuk, which is earlier in the pasuk. That that is uh, that, that 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 is superfluous. Um, so he learns that from the extra because the pasuk earlier on vayikra kaf pasuk yud zayin says ish asher yikachet achoto bat aviv o bat imo. It could have just said ish asher yikachet bat aviv o bat imo. Why does it say achoto? So again, to teach you this extra this extra extra dim. So once again. So now we've learned that there's another word, achotol, which is superfluous. Right, that, as Rashi points out, mati lamichtav kichachet bat aviv or bat imo. So what do Rabbanan do with this extra word, achotol? What do they do again? So the idach, they would say, hahu mi bayalei lechalek karet lamifatem velasach. So they would say, so again, essentially, what the type of limit over here is sometimes we have a limit, a word which is superfluous, but it has nothing to teach us about the pasuk in question, or nothing to teach us about the case we are currently discussing. So it's there to teach you about a different case. So they would say we have two other cases, okay, which are which are two separate, uh, which are two separate uh, isurim, which are two separate chavei kritot. And to teach you that each one in, in and of itself is going to be its own is so you're going to get correct. This is to do with, uh, we saw this in the Mishnah, this is to do with Shemen, Shemen Amishcha, that a person makes an imitation of the uh, Shemen Amishcha, the oil which is used to, uh, um, which is used to anoint. To anoint the Kohanim with Olim and to anoint the Kayim in the Mikdash, etc. So there's an, an Isur to reproduce that oil, and there is an Isur to anoint oneself with that oil. So each of those, you might have thought that a person makes oil and anoints, that's one thing. It's going to teach you that it's that it's two, that it's separate prohibitions. Says Rashi, 
Dehavei nami shnei lavim v'karet echad. What, what, what's the Kiddush? Because there, where these are written in the Torah, they are written as two separate prohibitions, but the, uh, the karet is only written once. Karet is only written once, but these two uh, things. So you might have thought that it's one karet that applies to uh, that, uh, that, that applies to both of them. From the fact that there's an extra word in our pasuk, which is not dealing with anything to do with this, but it's dealing with chivay karet to teach you that there's an extra separate prohibition of karet that uh, and 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 that, and that would apply over there. So it says Rashi davu nami shnei lavin v'karet echad v'tzrach lanu lechalek benem. We need to uh, distinguish between them. In the same way that we needed to distinguish between different arayot, because also there, karet is only written once. And he says, That's the uh, limud, that's the method of uh, extrapolation, that if it's not, um, it's got nothing to teach you over here, it must have nothing to teach you, uh, to teach you somewhere else. Okay, so now, so, so that's fine. So now we understand that Rabbi Yitzchak learns from this extra word, achoto, regarding this case. We learn that Rabbi Nan learned from this extra word, Achotol, regarding a different case, regarding the case of Mephatem Min Sach, with the Shemen, to teach you that there's a distinction there for the Chi of Karet. So where does Rabbi Yitzchak learn out that for, for Mephatem Min Sach, that there is a separate prohibition, a separate Karet? So I'm going to leave you in suspense until tomorrow. Okay. Yes, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. 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 Th